Hey everyone, uh, here I am today to show you how to take the unwrapped UVs into Photoshop. So what we do, new day, we set a project, make sure we tell it where it is, set. This way when I uh, put the textures in the spots that will remember it and, and it will always work. So here we are, if I go to my UV texture editor I can see my unwrapped products from last video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these into Photoshop. I've set my project, I've unwrapped it, select the polygon, go polygons, UV snapshot, and you'll see here that where it's going is where exactly I want it to be, which is under images. So images are going uh, out of Maya, and source images go in. So I'm going to call this one Crate uh, 512 by 512 should be OK, and I'll make it a JPEG. Press OK. And here we are with my cylinder as well. And 512 and JPEG done. Okay, now if you haven't got this selected, I'll show you what happens. Often you go know, polygon layouts, press OK, and it comes up with an issue. Okay, so just to solve that, just select the polygon. It's always good to look down here just to see if there's any issues that may come up. Okay, so we've done that. Now we can get out of there for a sec. We'll go to our location. So here's where mine's saved. And under images, there they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open them in Photoshop. I'll open up the barrel. Let's start with this one. Okay, the first thing I do is I'm going to double click on the background so that the lock disappears. That way I can then edit this one. Okay, now there's a couple of ways we can do this. The first method, what we can do is press invert. And you can see it's created an invert layer. Now, if I press on this one and change this type of layer to multiply, let's go and see what happens. So if I want to um, select the brush tool and I'm gonna paint over the top, you can see that I can paint over the top, but I can still see the lines. Okay, that's helpful for if I have to be very intricate obviously like I'm being right now. Um, so that's one way that we can do this. But let's step back in time. Okay, another way that we can do this is I can uh, select using the magic wand tool. So if I press around it, if I delete that, I actually get the outlines. But I don't want that, I want the opposite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control shift i and what that does is it inverts it. So now, it's actually gonna delete what's inside. Now if I press delete a few more times, what happens is it will just continue to delete that edge just a little bit. The reason I do that is to avoid unnecessary borders. So what we will do now is I'll find the image that I want. So ooh, let's see, I might make this one like um, some sort of nice painted metal. Well, yeah, this will do. Okay, so let's drag that in. Ooh, very nice. Now I can do this in multiple ways. I can sit here and I do this, or what I can do is if I put that one on top, now I can see how it looks there. So what I might do is put it like that. Then what I could do is I could duplicate that and just make it the whole way. Really depends, now it's up to you and your Photoshopping. So if I duplicate that layer, for example, I can move that down there like that. You might choose to, because um, obviously that looks the same. What we could do is duplicate it, and you could uh, make some borders look slightly different, or you could um, maybe use a, a blur just down here, or burn it, or smudge it, or something like that. Um, now, if you get something like this, you can't edit. It's because you'll see that this is just down here. Okay, so it's a smart object. So what we have to do is rasterize it. So if we right click, go rasterize layer, um, then limits our editing, but it also makes that we can edit probably more so. And we probably don't want to do that much. But hey, that looks a bit of fun anyway. <coughs> anyway, so let's just say that that's what we want for the sides. Then on the top, what we might do is we will just add something like this. 
Now, what we can do is just put it like that. It's going to actually be quite big, you can see, compared to the scale. So you're probably better off doing something like this. Now, if you get some overlap like this, what we can actually do is this. Okay, so I'm going to select in there. I'm going to select in here. And what I can actually do with just this one selected, I can go back to this one, press delete once I've rasterized it, and you see it's deleted that edge. Okay, and what I can do now is I'm going to duplicate that layer. I'm then going to move it like that. So that you can see that I've got that and that doesn't quite work. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hide that. I can then press enter. Okay, I can then go into this layer, press delete, Ooh, press delete. Eventually I'll get it right. And then I'll show that layer again. And there I go. So this is also a spot where you can now start to write some text if you wanted. You might write up here, top. Okay. Just depends what you want to do with it. Now, what now that we've finished that, what we're going to do is go file. I'm going to save that as. Now you might want to edit it, edit this later, and so it's always wise to keep it as a PSD because then you can uh, have better editing properties with your layers, etc. I'm just going to save it as a JPEG now because I'm finished with it. I'm not going to put it back in here. I'm going to instead put it in source images. So barrel UV. I might just change that barrel texture. Okay, I'm going to save that. It's now saved, so now I can jump back into Maya. And I'm ready to assign this. Okay, so assign new material. Um, what do I want? I want this to be a little bit reflective, but not really shiny, so I might make it a fong. Okay. Um, I'm going to call this Press enter. Remember when we rename this, if we don't press enter, it won't remember. So we click on here, go file, it will then load up with this one. Press there, should go straight to source images, go open. Now we can't see it, so we press six. And there it is. We can have a look and we can critique and say, hmm, what is it? So straight away you can see it's pretty obvious we've got a line here that doesn't quite match up. Again, okay, we can critique our work and we could say, well, this is what I'll change. This is what I'll change. Um, okay, so just think about that and then we could edit that. So I'll go through that one more time and I'll use this one as a method. So let's go into here. I've got our crate. I'm going to open that with, okay. Okay, so I've opened uh, the crate UV. So the first thing I do, unlock that. Oh, worked pretty easily, sorted. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you transparency. So what I can do is if I select this, hold shift and I can select multiple ones, press delete. All right, and then what I can do now is start to color these in or put something there. So what I might do is I'm going to, let's say make um, dice or something and what I could do put those like that okay beautifully lined up maybe in this one I would uh, put something else something like uh, an image or something like that um, let's go back here and just go um, there's no single flower but what you can do is go, if you search for an image that you'd like and you search as a PNG, you will probably retain that. So I'll show you what I mean. Okay. So if I save this one as, and if I save that under the uh, images just because that's helpful to know where it is. Alright. So I'm gonna do now is I'm also going to 
uh, drag that one in here. All right, so you can see it's got the transparency with it. There we go, beautiful. And for the other ones, I will probably just uh, do something a little bit interesting. Oh, whoops, that's fine. Okay. Now, what I can do with this, I'm going to save this as, I'm going to save it under source images, I'm going to call this one create textured. Now, I'm not going to save it as a PSD, I'm not going to save it as a JPEG, I'm going to save it as a PNG, so it can retain its transparency. Okay, now, assign a new material, Lambert. And I'm going to add a file to it. I'm going to then select the file and I'm going to put the PNG. And there we go. So, at the moment obviously this one looks a little bit terrible. But we can think of some ways that we might be able to use this. You could use this to project um, a backdrop, okay, or some leaves or something like that. You could use it for a sort of cube here. If I do something fancy with this, have a look at that, how it looks, looks okay. What about if, under special effects, I turn on some glow? Okay, might be a nice collectible. If I click hide the source, it will actually get rid of the um, images and the crate, but it will actually reflect the colors as well. So we've got some cool uh, ways that we might be able to use this as well. So, have a go, see how you go, and uh, let me know if you get any questions.